groups. They don't want to talk about Medicare for all because I'm the only person in the race that's for Medicare for all. They don't want to talk about the corruption because they take giant corporate PAC money. My right. Democratic opponent, you know what our average contribution this year has been so far? $2,700. My average contribution is $28. Jenk Uger, who's running in California's 25th district, was on CNN with Chris Cuomo, where he was dealt tough question after tough question, and he, I think, clearly dominated. So I have uh, three clips here to show you. I'm actually going to show you. I think this is most of the interview. Um, but the first clip here, I mean, watch this and judge for yourself. You're not purple. And two, you're a carpetbagger. You're yeah. not from there. Yep. Overcome them. So first of all, uh, I'm going to prove that this mythology that progressives can't win in purple districts is totally wrong. We represent the voters way better. So for example, strong progressives run uncorrupted. So I'm going to run against bribery. All the corporate campaign contributions are bribes. That's what they are. And you know what? Democrats know that, but Republicans know that as well. That's part of the reason that Trump won. He said, drain the swamp. People hate the corruption, and progressives are clearly against corruption. When the Nancy Pelosi's of the world say, no, 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 and we, we've got to run as corporate Democrats in purple districts, who are they trying to appeal to? The people in 25th District don't want big corporations what running them. The, They've been screwed by What that. about the you're not us? Yes, so I'm going to move to the district, and it's a fair point. Hey, they say you got to come here to represent me. That's right. My wife's a saint. She's got a job uh, near where we live now, but she said, yes, we're willing to move. So uh, I can't wait to go there. It's a wonderful community. I've been all over the district. I love it. Can't wait to move. And, got, and you have to think about it this way, Chris. Who do you want? Someone that is going to move in a couple of months and agrees with you completely, or someone who doesn't agree with you at all and happens to be there right now? All right, let's see if you can sell the people. Now there's going to be character analysis. You're not a commentator anymore. You're a mm -hmm. candidate. You've written things in the past yep. that were ugly. You've said they were insensitive and stupid. People say, nah, you're doing it out of convenience now. You said misogynistic things. Yep. You want to run as a far left candidate. Uh, they want to protect women's empowerment. You are the enemy. So first of all, uh, I wrote that stuff eight, now 19 years ago. I deleted it 15 years ago, not because I got caught or because uh, I thought somebody was going to find it. I deleted it because I didn't believe it anymore. So I'm not one of those guys who found Jesus on the way to, oh my God, I got caught. I, no, 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 no. I said, this is not me. I was trying to be a stupid, politically incorrect Republican. So I wrote these things that I knew were offensive. And so when I saw it with my eyes again, I was like, no, I, I'm getting rid of these. The right wing, the alt right found them and surfaced them two years ago. Now, a lot of the Democrats uh, who are part of the Democratic machine go, hey, I like that right wing well, tactic. Let me resurface that. A lot of progressives, they have zero appetite for a man saying anything about women being inherently f inferior. You know, for, as well they should, because that is totally wrong. The question isn't whether I said that. The question is, did I disavow it? And did, did I disavow it now that I'm running for office? Hell no, 15 years ago. Chris, I've been on the air now 18 years with the Young Turks. And would anybody argue that I'm not progressive enough? No, I fought for women's rights. Uh, minority rights, every kind of person you could find, I have fought for. That's why all of the top progressives back me. And, and it's because I've proven it. Uh, it. Would millions of progressives across the country, including millions of women, support me if I was that guy? No. Well, they support me because I'm a firebrand on the side of the left, on the side of rights for all of those the folks. questions will come. You'll have to address them. I hear your argument here. The audience does as well. All right. So again, I got two more clips to, to, to get to here, but my god <laughs> like jank is so passionate and it's because he actually cares it is so rare to see this out of a candidate or out of a politician to see this kind of fight in somebody now again the questions that como were was uh giving jank here were just i mean they're tough questions but if you know i mean the facts and and the reality behind them then they're not really tough questions because a lot of them are just distractions from the actual issues because his opponent in the race doesn't support the kinds of things that Jenk does, like Medicare for all. But let's go through some of them here. So um, uh, Jenk brings up uh, how corporate campaign contributions are bribes. I think this is a brilliant way to discuss it. It's uh, easily digestible for most people. They understand this is true. They are bribes. I mean, why else do corporations, these massive companies, wealthy donors, why else do they give large sums of money? It's because it's an investment and they expect a return on that investment. And if there is no return on that investment, then they stop giving in the future. So this is obvious to, I think, the vast majority of voters. Um, this question, I think, is maybe the most fair. Actually, 
let me go to this this question first the the purple district question so this is a point that's i mean it is amazing that this sort of narrative is never questioned but the moment you question it it completely falls apart this idea that you have to run as a moderate in a purple district but ask yourself what does moderate mean it means not fighting for medicare for all so it means you're on the side of insurance companies it means not taking on climate change with a bold plan so it means you're on the side of fossil fuel companies it means not taking on wall street so it means you're on the side of big banks i mean that's what moderate means moderate simply means you're pro corporate the average voter is not pro corporate so this whole idea that voters in purple districts want a corporate candidate is just completely absurd the reality is most voters have only been given two corporate options a corporate democrat or a corporate republican and the only real differences have been on the social issues but now with with someone like Jen Kuger you have somebody here who is not just uh, progressive on the social issues but also on the economic issues actually looks out for the average person that is the real difference here um this question that I was getting to earlier. So this is this is one this is a question that I actually think is is a fair question. He doesn't live in the district. So I mean any other race we would question, oh, you don't live in the district, why are you running in this race? In Jenk's case, I mean he lives in the state, he lives close to the uh, to the district, I believe that his district is close to LA, but it's not LA. Um so look, that's a fair question. But what actually matters and and he brings up uh the point here is do you want somebody who lives in the district but won't fight for you or somebody who lives outside the district and will fight for you? So, as Jenk said, he will move to the district if he wins the race, and obviously, this is somebody who is going to fight for you. So, I think that's ultimately what matters here. On the old blog posts, I mean, <laughs> this question because I know the whole history behind it is uh, is a a moot point for me. I mean, he as he said, he deleted them years and years before they were discovered by the right wing and then he uh so th the very fact that he deleted those those posts like 15 years ago already shows you he didn't agree with them 15 years ago so them being brought up now like this is what people have to understand we all grow and change and evolve i mean i wasn't born with all the positions and thoughts that i have right now i <laughs> grew and i i learn and i change i educate myself we all do that so this idea that Jenk should have been the exact same person now as he was what 20 years ago is crazy. Very I mean people like Bernie Sanders who who were the same person the entire time who has been the same person for 40 years that is incredibly rare. So when you have someone like a Bernie Sanders, I mean hold on to them. <laughs> like this is why Bernie Sanders is is a leader that really nobody can can compete with because he has had these positions the entire time. But most people aren't like that. Most people grow, change, evolve, learn. So that's the case here with these blog posts. I mean, he was a Republican when he was writing those offensive blog posts 20 years ago, and he deleted them 15 years ago. Like, it doesn't matter. This doesn't matter at all. Um, and the Young Turk's name. Oh, so I, I haven't shown that clip yet. So this next clip, they're going to talk about the, the name of the show, or his show, The Young Turks, uh, and ultimately how that, I guess, could hurt him or what it means. You'll see. The other big stick, the name of your show, The Young Turks. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a suggestion that until very recently, you didn't believe in the Armenian genocide and that it's not a good faith historical thing, it's a bias. Yeah. And that the name of the show suggests where you are on it yeah. and that you are basically ignoring genocide. No, absolutely false. So is it true that I was wrong about that? Again, in earlier in my life, yes. I wrote a college uh, paper, not a paper, but an editorial about that. I have disavowed that over and over again, not just now, for year upon year upon year. So it's just not true that it's recent at all. And so why did I believe that when I was younger? Because I grew up Turkish and I only heard one side of the story. Why didn't you change the name of the show? So the name of the show has absolutely nothing to do with it. My two co-founders are Jewish. When we got together, they weren't Turkish at all. Young Turks, the, the literal definition of the dictionary is young progressives looking to overthrow right. the established but system. But when you Google the Young Turks, you're going to get a history of that term. It's like why now Trump and his guys want to call themselves nationalists. When you look at how nationalism has been used, very ugly. Wait, Young Chris, Turks you was used no, back no, in no, Turkey. Wait. Are you saying as, that Rod Stewart? Are you saying that Rod Stewart uh, call, 
call the song Young Turks because he, he was an ode to the no. Armenian Genocide? Of course not. When Michael Ovitz did it at CAA, of course not. Why did you, you say it as someone who was saying the Armenian Genocide wasn't real? No, but as, as I explained, I already disavowed that. It had absolutely nothing to do with that. So it was about literal definition, young progressives looking to overthrow the established system. Now, you know our show a little bit. Is, I know is, it a lot. So isn't that nearly a perfect description of what we are? Absolutely. So there you go. So once again, Jang just completely nails it. I mean, the idea, this has been obvious. I mean, okay, it had, let's be fair. It has not been obvious. When I first came across the show, The Young Turks, I had no idea what the hell that meant. And I still, to this day, think it's a horrible name for a media company. I mean, I really think that them having that name has has suppressed their ability to grow more than they would have if they had a different name. So the Young Turks is a stupid name, but not because of its association with, with the with the Armenian genocide, but because it's a dumb name. It doesn't. I mean, most people don't know the definition of it. So it's most people that come across that name may just think, "What is this? A show of a bunch of Turkish people? Like that's how it comes off." So it's a stupid name. But with that said, um. The show has never, I mean, Anna Kasparian, an Armenian, has been like a major part of the show almost the entire time it's existed. It clearly, if you know the definition of the young of Young Turks, then you know what the show means and, and why they, they have that label, why they use that name. Um, and yeah, he's disavowed the genocide, I mean, over and over and over. It's, it's crazy how much this still comes up. I mean, I'll see it on Twitter occasionally. People still attack him over it. It's like, dude, did you see like 10 years ago when he disavowed this? <laughs> like, just, they just try to create these narratives that have never, that, that haven't been a thing for years and years and years, but they try to keep bringing it up to try and smear him or the show. Um, let's get to the last clip here, though, where this is uh, kind of the whole point of all of this, all of these questions. Ultimately, uh, Jenk nails here exactly why all these questions are being brought up. That's why we need what I'm that. saying. There's a convenience out of it now that's going to be criticized. You're a candidate. You got to answer for it. But Chris, all of these things, look, I don't come as the accused. I come as the accuser because all of these are distractions from the issues. They don't want to talk about Medicare for all because I'm the only person in the race that's for Medicare for all. They don't want to talk about the corruption because they take giant corporate PAC money. My right. Democratic opponent, you know what our average contribution this year has been so far? $2,700. My average contribution is $28. Her, she's got about 130 or so people right. that contributed to her or organizations. Only 22 of them appear to be real people. I've got 13,000 real people. I saw the numbers. Me. I'm not questioning them. I'm just saying you're going to put yourself out there. You're going to have to answer for all of it. And that's why I asked you the questions. All right. I'll continue to do so. Jank2020.com. Okay, we're going to win this race. I'm going to show that progressives are super strong and we could win anywhere because everyone hates the bribery. And everyone can't stand that corporations have taken over our government. I'm going to fight for those folks in that district, and we're going to win together. And you are welcome to make the case here, as always. All right. That's it. These questions, these tough questions, are just distractions from the actual issues. The actual issues, the policy issues that he would fight for compared to everybody else in the race. Now, I just want to make a quick comment about like, the, way, the way Cuomo was taking um, Jenks' enthusiasm. It, it almost seemed like Cuomo thought he that Jenk was yelling at him, but that's just who Jenk is. Jenk is passionate. That's how he comes off. Um, <laughs> but it was just funny to see Chris Cuomo be like, hey, I'm just asking the questions here. Um, but, okay, so let's get to the, the, the issues here. The obvious way to compare uh, Jenk Uger to his main uh, rivalry, or rivalry, his, his main um, opponent in this race, his main Democratic opponent in this race, Christy Smith, is to look at their websites. So... When you go to Jenk's website, he has an issues page, and it centers issues like uh, corruption in politics, higher wages, climate change. But when you go to Christy Smith's page, there is no issues page. I mean, <laughs> I spent time on this site looking for what she believed, and I, I read her her, her uh, Meet Christy page. It discusses um, uh, what she's done as somebody uh, as a as a state representative, but it doesn't talk about what she actually supports and what she would fight for if she were to win the seat in Congress. So when you have someone like this who doesn't tell you what they're about, her average contribution is $2,700, which is crazy. I mean, the contribution limit is $2,800. So the fact that her average is $2,700, <laughs> I mean, it really shows you who she represents. Whereas Cenk Uger... He gets his, his, his donations from real people, from the average person. 
because he's going to fight for the average person. Doesn't take corporate money. Doesn't take. Doesn't have private fundraisers. So Christy Smith has the backing of the Democratic Party establishment because she's a safe bet. She's going to play ball. She'll play their game. Jenk is not going to get that support. <laughs> so I mean, even if he, if he, even if he wins his seat, they're not going to support him. It's going to be uh, similar in the way that um, uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, has treated AOC and other Justice Dems because they are. I mean, what AOC fights for and other just Democrats fight for, it is antithetical to what Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic establishment want because the establishment raised lots of money from corporations, listened to private interests. They are heavily, those private interests are heavily considered when um, when uh, creating policy. But AOC and other Justice Democrats and Cenk Uger, because they're only funded by the people, they don't have to answer to any private interest. They just answer to the people which is why they're able to publicly fight for things like Medicare for All, like canceling student debt, like the Green New Deal. So they're not attached to anybody but the actual voters. That is the main difference uh, in what you would get with someone like, or with Cenk Uger, compared to anybody else in this race. I mean, look, I think it's clear. I think the choice is obvious. If you were in this district, not only should you be donating to Cenk if you can, but you should also be volunteering. Because this is a race that if you have... Oh my God, if you have Jake Uger in Congress, it will be, uh, it's, it, I'm not even sure how to describe it. <laughs> like, there will be a, a, a seismic shift in what is going to happen in Washington, D.C., because he is going to be a fighter. I mean, not just a fighter for his district, which of course he will, but a fighter in general for people all across the country. So you're going to have somebody who is, who is brash, who's going to be out there, who's going to be fighting for these policies alongside uh, politicians like uh, AOC and Rashida Tlaib and others. So, if you support, I mean, if you if you want to um, uh, support a, a campaign that actually looks to change government to help people, change it for the better, change it so it's not simply answering to corporate interests, to Wall Street, to to, to to special interest to donors, but listening to the people, then I think it's obvious that you should be supporting Jank Uger for Congress.